Okay, exponential equations. This is mainly aimed at grade 11s, but you can also watch it if you are in grade 10. Um, these examples might just be a little bit more difficult than the grade 10 examples, but it could help you. Um, and also in matric, it's useful to look over this again because you will be tested on exponential equations in your matric exams, even though your teacher probably won't have time to go over it again. So just a quick revision of um, exponential equations from what you were supposed to do in grade 10. Of course, with it being a COVID year last year, whether you did it in grade 10 or not, that is another story. But let's just jump straight into this example. We are solving for x and the equation is two to the x equal to four to the x plus one. Now, I can just remind you of the first exponential equations that you did in grade nine. If you had something like three to the x equal to nine, you would need to think what must x be to make three to the power of that number, whatever that number is, equal to nine. Now, I'm sure that we all know that 3 squared, 3 to the power of 2, is 9. So x would have to be 2, because then you have 3 to the 2, and that does make your equation true. That makes your equation equal. The method that you would use for that, though, instead of just saying that x equals 2, of course you can do it like that, if you can tell immediately that x must equal 2 to make this equation true. Um, if you couldn't do that, then the rule is, or the method, the step that we urge you to take, would be to write both sides of the equation with the same base. So nine, you would need to try and rewrite nine so that it also has a base of three, so that it has the same base than the term that has your variable in the exponent, because you're trying to solve for x, right? And the x has a base of three, or the three to the x rather. The term that has the x in it has a base of three. So nine, we could also write as three to the power of two. Now we see that we have the same bases. So that is always the first step. Same base on left-hand side and right-hand side. Now, once you have that, it's actually quite easy to see what your x value must be to make these two sides equal. So 3 to the power of x must be equal to 3 to the power of 2. I hope that it makes sense that x then has to be 2. If x is anything else, if x is anything other than 2, then you won't have the same exact expression on either side of this equation. So you have 3 to the x equal to 3 to the 2. So that means that x is equal to 2. Because if x is 2, then you have 3 to the 2, equal to 3 to the 2. So that would make the two sides equal. So that is the first step, to have the same base on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And then the second step would be to make your exponents equal from there. So let's see if we can apply that concept to this question. We have two to the power of x equal to four to the power of x plus one. Now this is an interesting question because we have an x on either side of our equation, but I don't want you to be put off by that. We're gonna follow the exact same steps as we did with the simpler examples. First, we need to notice that this is in fact an exponential equation. And the way to recognize that is that your variable is in the exponent. I'm sure we can all see that the variable, the thing that we're solving for, the letter that we need to solve, the x that we're solving for, that is in the exponent. So here we have two to the power of x equal to four to the power of x plus one. Now you need to ask yourself, which one of these two numbers is the smaller number? Clearly two is smaller than four. So what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna have to try and write four as two to the power of something. So we can actually do that four, is the same as two to the power of two, two squared. And that is then all to the power of x plus one. So there we are on our way to getting the same base. We do have the same base currently, but we don't like these brackets, okay? We need to have two to the x and two to the power of something. No brackets, no extra exponents. All right, so we need to get rid of these brackets. Now, I hope that you remember the law of exponents that says, if you have a to the m, and that is then to the power of n, 
you would then have to multiply those exponents together. So if you have an exponent inside a bracket and outside a bracket, you times them together. So two, you're going to have to multiply by this whole outer exponent. That's something to remember. The, the outer exponent has two terms. So I need to multiply both of these terms by two. So we're actually going to do this. We're going to multiply two by x and then by the plus one. Now, guys, if we look at this rule, when we multiply the exponents, do we notice that the base stays the same? So we're not actually going to change the base. The base is going to stay 2. The only thing that we're going to do is we're going to multiply the exponent 2 into that outer exponent. So we're still going to have a base of 2. And we're going to say 2 times x is 2x. And 2 times 1 is 2. Now we notice that we have the same base on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So for these two things, let me just rewrite this 2 to the x. It might be a bit clearer to see then. For this equation to be true, for the left-hand side of this equation to be equal to the right-hand side, you need to now say that those exponents must also be equal because x would have to be equal to that exponent to make these two sides equal. So now we're going to say, therefore, x is equal to 2x plus 2. This is now a straightforward equation that we can solve. This 2x, we're going to move to the left, and x minus 2x is negative x. We're left with that 2 there, and then we must just take that negative 1 that's here in front. We must take that over and divide by negative 1. So our answer is x equals negative 2. I'm going to do another one like this quickly. <clears throat> Because sometimes it might be a bit more complicated. You might not just have your two things with your variable in the exponent. You could get something like this. a to the power of x plus 1 is equal to 32 divided by 4 to the power of x. All right, so this equation looks very complicated because we now actually have three bases here. We have an 8, we have a 32, and we have a 4. I want you guys always to think of prime numbers. So if we look at the example that we did here at the top, two is a prime number, four we wrote as a product of its prime number as well. I can show you quickly how to do that on the calculator. If you don't know how to do that in your head, you would type four, you would press equals so that the four is actually there. Then you would press shift and the factor button, which is that one with the dots on, and it would give you the prime factorization, two squared. Now we can do that with all of these numbers as well. If you don't know that eight is actually two to the power of three, you can use your calculator for that. Eight equals, there we have the eight shift factor and we get two to the three. So we're gonna rewrite eight as two to the power of three and that is then to the power of x plus one. So we're literally just replacing the eight with a two cubed equals 32, again, use your calculator if you don't know, but 32 is actually 2 to the power 5. And that we are supposed to divide by 4 to the x, and 4 is the same as 2 squared. So now, do we see that we have all the same bases? We have a 2 there, a 2 there, and a 2 there. But again, we're supposed to just have 2 to the power of something equals to 2 to the power of something. So we want to get rid of all these brackets. We want to get rid of this division. And we don't want two separate twos. We want one thing. So here, again, we're going to apply this law. We have an exponent inside a bracket and outside a bracket. So we're going to multiply them. So the 3, we must multiply by both terms in that outer exponent. So we're going to have 2 to the 3x plus 3. 3 times x is 3x, and 3 times 1 is 3. And that is equal to, now guys, in order to get this to one base of 2, we need to apply this exponent law that says, if you have a to the power of n, and you divide that by a to the power of n, the same base, different exponents, but we are dividing, then you are going to minus those exponents. All right, so you keep the same base. You start with an A divided by an A, and it stays A. That is very important. So here you have a 2 divided by a 2, but because we're just going to work with the exponents, it's going to stay 2, but now it's going to be the first exponent, 5, minus the second exponent. 
Now we have what we're wanting. We have a two and a two. And if these two expressions are equal, these two powers, that means that the exponents will have to be equal to make this whole equation true. So there we have three X plus three equals five minus two X. So once the bases are the same, you make the exponents equal and then you solve for X from there. So here we have three X, this minus two X when I move it is going to become plus two X. So I'm gonna be left with five X because three X plus two X is five X. And on the other side, we have our five. And then this plus three when I move it is going to become minus three. So that is then two. Now we need to solve for x on its own. So on this side, I'm multiplying by five. When I move that five over, I have to actually do the opposite of multiplying by five, which is dividing by five. So x is going to be two over five. Two divided by five, it's better if you write it as a fraction. Okay, now there is a more difficult type of question where you have multiple terms because in these two equations, we only had one term and one term. Yes, we had to simplify this term specifically so that it was just one base, but we had one term and one term. Now, when we have more than one term, we're gonna have to factorize. So if we have two to the X plus two to the X plus one equal to 24, In this case now, because we have more than one term, if we look at what we had here, we had just one term, a base of two with an exponent equal to one term, a base of two with an exponent. We want the same thing, all right? That is the only way for us, or it has to be written in this way for us to actually make those exponents equal. So we're gonna have to go from two terms to one term. And the only way to do that is to factorize. Now, what I want you guys to notice is that there is a two to the X in each of these terms. So we can actually take out two to the X as a common factor, but it is easier to do that if we first split up this power because we have two terms in our exponent. If we split it up using this, do you guys remember this first law of exponents? If you have the same bases and you're multiplying, then you keep that base and you times the exponents. Oh, sorry, not, you're not times, eh? You are adding them, of course, my bad. Let's just erase that. Sorry, I was looking at the times while I was writing. So M plus N, my apologies. We can also apply this rule backwards. So if we have something like this, A to the power of M plus N, then we can break it up into A to the power of the first exponent multiplied by A to the power of the second exponent. This is just this rule written the other way around. So we're actually going to apply this here. So we're gonna just keep writing that as two to the X, but this second term, I'm gonna split that up and write it as two to the X times two to the one, and that is equal to 24. So I've taken this exponent that has more than one term and I've split it up into its, basically its factors. All right, so the M and then the N, the X, and then the one. Now it's quite easy to see when we actually take out this two to the X as a common factor, what we'll be left with. So remember when you take something out as a common factor, you take each of the terms and you divide it by that common factor. That is what must be left in that bracket. So two to the X divided by two to the X is one. And then plus two to the X times two divided by two to the X. Basically the two to the X's will go away. You're gonna be left with a two and that is equal to 24. Now we can simplify that in the bracket, we're actually just gonna have a three. And now in order to get this two to the X on its own, remember that's what we're always doing when we're solving for X, we want the X thing on its own, we're gonna have to divide by three. So two to the X is going to equal 24 divided by three, which is eight. Now this is the form that we want. We have two to the X equal to a number. Now we can try and write this number with the same base. Eight is the same as two to the power of three. So we have two to the X equal to two to the three. So in order to make this equation true, X has to be equal to three. Okay, 
And that is basically what you need to know for exponential equations. There are some more difficult ones. There are ones with rational equation, rational exponents, but I have posted some videos on that before. So if you're fine with this, um, then you need to look at the equations with rational exponents as well, but that video was posted a while ago. I hope that this helps.